For RCR TV, I'm Sean Kinney, and welcome to HetNet Happenings, where we take a look at all things DAS, Wi Fi, small cell, and much, much more. Comscope. Thinking beyond today's technology to help you make the best decision for your network and your business. Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.com. Welcome back to HetNet Happenings. We've got a great show for you today, and we're sort of continuing our in-depth look at how the telecom industry is becoming flatter. This is being driven by broad convergence between different sorts of access technologies, as well as being pushed forward by the ongoing research and development associated with 5G mobile networks and the Internet of Things. I'm here speaking with Manesh Jindal, the head of strategy and technology for Ericsson. Manesh, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, I really look forward to hearing from you exactly what Ericsson's vision for the network society is. Thank you, Sean. Though, so network society, if you look at the definition of network society, it is anything that will benefit from being connected will be connected. And this was something that uh, uh, was coined in 2010, and, and I would say that we are um, sort of in the first, towards the first phase of that whole network society and, and kind of entering into the second phase. Uh, what the Network Society has done is with, with especially um, the connecting of um, everyone, it has opened up the platform uh, for a new business model. It's, it's given rise to a lot of collaboration. And, you know, if you look at from um, the industrialized world where it was all based on uh, the physical aspects of it and um, which has kind of moved to um, the value in data, the value in connecting the people and globalization of collaboration. And, and the society is actually rewarding the, uh, the, the uh, socializing and collaboration of, uh, of the solutions that we bring to the table. So what Network Society has done is kind of um, unleash the value um, of a lot of the businesses that typically would not have considered uh, the mobile networks for enhancing their business. And that's what it has um, enhanced. Okay, so Manesh, help me understand sort of the transformative properties of the network society by maybe telling us about some of the different verticals that Ericsson is working in. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, we uh, one of the, the pillars of uh, the network society we're looking into is the what we call as industry and society, and which is which are the verticals like uh, the transportation industry, um, utilities, and uh, you know. Uh, what this has done is, if you look at, uh, I'll give you an example of connected cars. Um, if you look at uh, the kind of uh, um, uh, modules that are getting into cars, uh, traffic management, um, being able to provide uh, informa uh, inf uh, informatic so uh, solutions like, um, you know, whether it could be weather, it could be um, the uh, traffic management, avoiding accidents, avo uh, avoidance. Um, we we also see uh, things like uh, the cyclist having a camera, and uh, with the sensors, you can actually figure out uh, where the traffic is coming from and avoiding the accidents before they actually are about to happen. So uh, we we are seeing a huge amounts of innovation in in one of these things. Now let's look at the utilities. Um, if you look at the smart meters. And if you if you're looking at how uh, the grid management is going to happen, uh, the intelligence that the grid management can do today, um, uh, you know, we started out from the uh, from the era where uh, we had to call into uh, the electricity department to say there's an outage, and then they would have to send somebody out to figure out what the issue is. Now, uh, imagine going from there to having sensors that automatically figure out that there is a outage or an issue, being able to reroute the circuits. At the same time, let's say you have um, cameras at some of the very critical junctures, which can actually tell you, tell you what's going on 
and, and be able to address these issues in a much more um, timely fashion. And in certain cases, actually, it could happen instantaneously. And it's this level of, of automation that really it drives broad efficiency and, and really broad quality of life changes. And, and I find the term network society so appealing because it, it sort of encompasses some of the other hot topics in telecom, uh, particularly I'm thinking of 5G and then the Internet of Things. So Manesh, from your perspective, do we need to continue to evolve our mobile networks to 5G before we can really fully realize the vision for a network society? Or is it something that we can do today with the technology that's commercially available? So, good, good question. We, we see a combination of it. We see that there are certain use cases uh, that are obviously possible today and that, that are happening with 4G. Um, if I peel the onion of 5G, it's, it's not, uh, I would call a 5G as a combination of evolution of a 4G as well as a new waveform um, that's going to be created um, probably in the upper uh, spectrum of 6 megahertz and up, right, where um, the expectation is you'll have um, and upwards of 100 megahertz and multiples of 100 megahertz of spectrum available. But that, that doesn't mean that till that comes about um, that we can't evolve our current 4G network. So it'll be a combination of on the lower spectrum, let's look at LTE, LTE Advanced, LTE Evolution that are going to be backwards compatible. And then we will see the 5G um, you know, uh, a new waveform being developed for uh, the higher spectrum uh, with a much larger bandwidth in, in that spectrum. Now, what that does is um, it's going to, uh, the devices are going to be working on a combination of both uh, 5G with this new waveform and LT Advanced. And, and with, as you know, with the higher spectrum, um, uh, your um, propagation properties are going to be very different. Um, the, the cell radius is going to be much more shorter in, in case of 6 megahertz and uh, gigahertz rather and, and upwards. And uh, what will happen is that when you need a burst of very high throughput and, and you have that uh, the new um, waveform in 6 gigahertz and upwards, you'll be able to take advantage of that. But at the same time, let's say if you do not have that coverage, you also have your underlying network of LT Advance um, that provides you uh, with that capability. Now, 5G is just isn't about just the new waveforms, um, and it's not just about um, you know the radio technology. It's also a combination of making sure that our core networks are also transformed. So what you will notice, um, you will see that with by the time we get to this 5G. Uh, both our IT and core networks are also being transformed in such a way that they are ready for these new um, verticals. Uh, there are use cases that we don't even know um, today, you know, and, uh, but our, our networks have to be ready to be able to handle these new use cases in a much more rapid fashion. Um, gone are those days of uh, building networks vertically for each of those use cases. So we, we have definitely expect um, that our networks are going to be a lot more agile, um, and and that will give rise to an agile operator that are, um, where they're able to uh, uh, the networks able to adapt to these new use cases, and the same network will be actually sliced to handle different industries. So uh, the part of the network or the requirements of a network for just a voice and standard data is going to be very different than what we just talked about in terms of uh, a network that handles a surgery or hospitals and stuff like that, because you need very, very different type of latencies and throughputs for that. So that's where I see that the networks that will evolve to handle multiple use cases. Yeah, that's a really interesting uh, observation, Manish. I sort of uh, think of it to myself as like uh, spectral lanes on a highway. And so it's interesting to, if I understood you correctly, you're suggesting that maybe at some point connected cars will exist in one sort of spectral slice, maybe healthcare will exist in another slice, but uh, that seems like a huge exercise in standardization, uh, particularly when you're looking at a 2020 uh, commercialization. 
You're absolutely right. And, and, and some parts of these will be standardized. And, and for example, the waveforms will be. But if you look at the network agility and, and, and the transformation of the core and IT solutions, uh, that's happening today. In fact, Ericsson is um, uh, right in the midst of doing that in making sure that uh, we enable and we make um, our, our operators become more agile. And in order to become an agile operator, uh, you not only need, um, a, you need an agile network, you need agile um, organization, because there's, there's going to be def definitely a very different ways of working now, as well as um, a, a service agility. So all these three are very, very important. And let's not forget security. It's a huge part of this, you know, as we are uh, becoming a network society, um, security is going to be an absolute paramount, and uh, we are definitely taking it very seriously. Yeah, Manesh, can you go a little uh, further into some of the, the security concerns as they relate to just this exponential amount of data that we see and then these new proprietary, uh, you know, almost proprietary clouds that will contain these data sets? Uh, but what are some of the security concerns? Well, the, the one thing we want to make sure that uh, the, the security is um, not only just from a device perspective and not just from a network perspective, you also have to do a lot of predictive security also. Uh, a lot of times, um, you know, you might have uh, malfunctions already within your network. You, you may or may not be able to protect everything, but you have to be able to detect and we have to make sure absolutely certain that with the, the big data and the amounts of data um, that has been consumed by our mobile networks, um, you know, we absolutely have to find mechanisms um, that can detect when there is vulnerability in the system um, before uh, somebody else takes a, you know, undue advantage of that. So um, it's, it's not just uh, the detection of it, it's also prediction and, and being able to um, uh, being able to handle that from within the network itself. Because keep in mind, even our base stations have an IT connection today. So it's, it's, it's absolutely important that we, uh, uh, we protect our networks both from the core network as well as from, um, from the radio perspective. And now, Manesh, if I could uh, backtrack a little bit earlier when you were uh, explaining how some of the evolutions to LTE are getting us a little closer to, to 5G. You mentioned uh, LTEA. Uh, what I'm curious about, though, is where Wi-Fi might fit into that equation as we continue to, to develop 5G. Great question. Um, Wi-Fi, you know, when, when you look at indoor solutions, Wi-Fi will always be a... A, a good part of that solution, um, where what Ericsson looks at Wi-Fi is, um, it's it's another tool in our toolbox to handle indoor coverage. Now, uh, we talked about network society and, and connecting, uh, you know, billions of devices, and, and the key here is connectivity. So, um, we see that 70 plus percent of the traffic actually is generated indoors. And unless we don't make absolutely certain that the indoor coverage and capacity is addressed, we're not going to achieve uh, the quality of service and the quality of experience um, that our end users expect, as well as uh, you know the, the the new business models and uh, that we are uh, anticipating. And obviously, they will not come to fruition if we don't have the right kind of coverage and capacity. So, indoor becomes very critical to it now. Um, again, Ericsson, through, so through our uh, small cells development, you know, if you look at uh, what we have done with uh, the dark solution, uh, we have another um, um, indoor solution that actually combines um, both Wi-Fi um, as well as LTE, and um, actually in that same module, we have wideband CDMA also. So it's actually a free technology um, indoor small cell that, that we've actually uh, created, and, and that will address... Um, uh, you know, all the technologies. Now, uh, one of the advantages with that is what we have seen is that uh, obviously there are limitations uh, to uh, the license spectrum. And so um, regardless of how much spectrum you have today, um, you know, it's, it's not enough. And, 
and what uh, with uh, LTEU and, and um, uh, LAA, you're a actually able to combine both uh, LTE as well as Wi-Fi to be able to give um, pretty good throughput uh, along with the coverage for indoors, um, the upwards of almost 300 uh, megabits per second today. All right, now Manesh, as we wrap up here, I was hoping uh, maybe to ask you a slightly more speculative question, but uh, all of the technologies that we just discussed, uh, once they figure in and we fully realize the vision for a network society, how do you think your life will be different? <laughs> well, um, I think I think we we will actually have a life that will be full of uh, collaborative ideas and coming up with solutions um, that we couldn't even fathom. I think um, we will continue to use technology to the betterment of our lives, um, to make it uh, more safer, um, to to make it uh, uh, definitely more fulfilling. So I, I actually look forward to uh, being able to create these solutions where uh, we can actually enable um, a lot of these things that, that we, we can't uh, even think of today. And like we talked about, uh, you know, being able to do a lot of these, um, well, let's take the case of, again, the remote surgery. Fantastic example. Um, if, if I'm sitting somewhere um, in another country and the best surgeon who has the ability to fix my son or daughter's ailment um, could do that sitting remotely and I have accessibility to that, you know, that's, that's fantastic, right? Being able to enable those kind of things um, and, and being able to create a much safer car, um, you know, um, it's, it's definitely very, very exciting and something that I'm looking forward to and be part of. I'm looking forward to it as well, Manesh, and I really appreciate you taking the time to fill us in on the work Erickson is doing uh, in regards to the Network Society. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate you giving me the opportunity. All right. Well, I want to thank Manesh for sharing all of his insights and for filling us in on what Ericsson is doing regarding the Network Society. And for the folks at home, this is something that we cover pretty regularly here at RCR. So I'd encourage you to check out rcrwireless.com for daily telecom and ICT news, as well as our RCR TV webpage and our YouTube channel, which has all sorts of great multimedia content. I want to thank you for tuning in to HetNet Happenings, and we'll see you next week. HetNet Happenings is a production of RCR TV. To reach Sean Kinney or to suggest a show topic for HetNet Happenings, you can reach Sean at skinney at rcrwireless.com. On Twitter at Sean Kinney RCR. To find out more about the latest in HetNet and all things wireless, dig into rcrwireless.com.